there's never been a better time to have Sirius XM with even more exclusive content with over 150 channels in your vehicle, including the widest, deepest variety of music, ad-free. Root for your team. Get news. Listen to whatever makes you laugh. And hear all about your favorite stars. Your Platinum Plan offer includes more than ever before to enjoy online, on your phone, or at home. Create your own ad-free, personalized stations powered by Pandora. Hear ad-free extra channels filled with music and enjoy a favorite shows with Sirius XM Video. Thousands of hours of shows and performances on demand. What you love is on now. Looks like we've got a brand new entry into the DSP game, and it's coming to you from the team at Memphis Audio. We've got their product experts in the house today to show you why their take on DSP might be a little simpler than you would imagine. This is CMA Workshop, Memphis Audio, and it starts now. <laughs> Hey, what's going on, everybody? And welcome to another episode of CMA Workshop presented by SiriusXM. I'm your host, Ben Wu. Of course, we're still talking DSP because let's be honest, these three letters represent a whole lot of relevant right now when it comes to 12 volt electronics and mobile audio, um, especially. And when it comes to this, obviously Memphis has been in the game for quite some time. We know this because we've had the opportunity to have them on the show before on the network. They've covered everything from their brand new subwoofers to their amplifier lines, to their new three-way speakers and so on and so forth and applications and power sports and every other category you can think of but now they're coming to the table in the dsp game so you wonder hmm what could they offer and why are they coming in at, at a, such a critical time and what could they offer that's a little bit different well we're going to find that out today so don't you dare go away and we're going to start this dialogue by bringing on their canadian distributor which is automobility and their product manager steve cologne hi ben Hey, Steve, what's going on? Thanks to, for making the time to come back on the show. This is a cool one because we're talking about a brand new product, literally hot off the press, hitting market right now from a brand that I know you're very enthousi enthusiastic about. I remember when we talked, when you first were able to announce the partnership with Automobility in Memphis, uh, it was a big deal. And it seems like the, obviously the relationship has been flourishing. And, you know, Memphis to me, and maybe this is, has a lot to do with their president, Nick, is a fun and progressive brand, right? They like to do things their way, like to do things a little bit different. So what was your reaction, Steve, when you heard that they were gonna launch a new DSP platform? Uh, it was exciting. And, you know, I'll speak also on behalf of the dealers, adding that new product to the, you know, full uh, lineup and to the category of products they're currently offering was great for them. You know, um, it's great for our dealers. So they've been innovating since, uh, well, actually since it's been a while, but, uh, since we've been dealing with them, there's always that, you know, that specific product within that specific category, which is always a, always a bit different than, you know, some other offerings on the market. So it's great. Yeah, they always find a way to make themselves just a little bit more unique. And I know yeah, yeah. that they've made some big claims, you know, uh, we, they were kind of teasing on this product in the previous session that we've done together. And one of the big messages that Memphis wants to uh, portray is that their DSP is maybe the most simple DSP that is available on the market right now. Is there a demand for a simplified DSP system right now in the market, uh, in your opinion, Steve? Uh, there is. I mean, there's always, a, a, you know, a space in the market for that, for simplified, simplified products. Um, you know, as Nick mentioned in our sales uh, meeting with the reps, uh, uh, him, which he's not, you know, an audio expert, he was even able to use it on his own car and perform uh, the whole process uh, within a respectable amount of time. And he's not an audio expert. So, uh, I mean, we're going to le learn about a lot about it after, sorry. And uh, you'll see why pretty much. 
Beautiful. So, guys, you guys want to tune in. A new DSP platform from Memphis. They're promising it for it to be simple. They're going to show us exactly why. And to set the mood, we've got a video here we're going to show you and show you exactly what this DSP product looks like. We'll be right back. So, Steve, without further ado, I mean, the product looks sexy. Let's see if they can back it up, which I'm sure they will. Uh, let's go ahead and bring our experts in. Uh, first and foremost, let's welcome back the president of Memphis Audio. His name is Nick Lomonaco. And along with him, we also have the regional sales manager and in-house DSP expert, shall I say, from Memphis. Ellis Mathis will be joining us as well. Let's get everybody in the studio today and see what is going on with Memphis DSP. Hey, gentlemen, how are you? Good. So, wow, good to see you, Ben. Good to see you, Nick. Ellis, welcome to the show. Let me start with you, Nick. Um, why is the timing now for Memphis to all, all of a sudden launch and get into the DSP game? Well, we've, we've been working on it, trying to get it the, the Memphis way, bring it out to the market. But it's perfect timing for us because we've just launched our newest line of uh, VIV speakers and amplifiers, the best speakers by far the best amplifiers by far that we've ever launched. So our best sounding stuff now is the ability to easily get even better with our, our DSP added onto it. So it's the perfect time to get everything working well together. Nice. So it's all part of a unified kind of plan, I can see, um, to elevate that audio, you know, that audio experience. Um, Ellis, you've had a chance to be a part of the process, to develop this product from day one. And, and you were behind that entire creative part as well. So how was that like? Can you share with us some of the, the goals that were set forth when um, applying yourself within this process to build this uh, platform. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, it's been a fun process for us. It's something we were kind of passionate about getting this product out, just to kind of elevate the, the Memphis line, kind of elevate within our dealers. Uh, and, and a real thing for us was we wanted to take some of the top tier dealers that we already have using Memphis product and give this kind of as an addition to what they already had, just to elevate their game that much more, to elevate our product that much more in their stores. And it's it's working well so far. No, well, I'm really excited to hear how well and how this all works. Well, uh, Nick, can you give, give us a breakdown of what we're about to go through today? Uh, well, what we're going to go through today, we're, we're going to have an unboxing. So we're going to have the best beard in 12 volt in the world, not just Canada. <laughs> Uh, he will he will unbox the the beautiful product for us. Uh, we'll talk about the main specs. We'll go through, look at the inputs and outputs. Show you it's very very simple. Go through some basic uh, setups from a basic setup to more of a full control setup, and then uh, Ellis will run you through uh, all the features of both the PC and uh, I'll still hold this one of the easiest uh, mobile apps on, on the market. So we're going to do a full setup on that. Um, to get every, everybody believing what we say and that it's it's real easy to use. Well, I'll tell you what, that sounds like a full menu that's ahead of us. Why don't we not waste any time? Let's get you guys set up. And uh, from if, you, if I heard that right, Steve, we're gonna start with you. Uh, so I guess you have the product, so let's unbox it. Let's do it, let's see what right, this all looks right like. Right here, brand new, fresh out of the box, as you can see. Um, package is beautiful. There's your manual, and it's fresh in the box, Steve. You're making it fresh out of the box. Oh, Steve. <laughs> yeah. So we'll, we'll talk about that plenty, but if you look, the, the cosmetics for Memphis dealers, it, it matches the VIV amplifiers. And this one, I'll, I can easily say without, without anyone arguing, we have the sexiest physical DSP on the market. Now, if you look there, the badge, the VIV badge on the top, that's reversible, so you can you can mount it either way you want to look at it. It comes, peel the sticker off, mount it either way. So that's, uh, we'll get a little bit more into that when we show the uh, the inputs and outputs in a minute. Uh, but very, very clean design, not not just to, not just designed to be hidden in a dash. You you can mount this right next to the amplifiers and and, uh, and show it off for sure. 
if I make it, can make a comment here, Nick, I mean, that definitely follows your VIV kind of architecture and design, right? The industrial mm -hmm. design, the colors, the materials, but you know, I've always been very critical of packaging as well. And you guys have done such a great job with the new recent, I guess, revision of your look and feel as far as the packaging goes. Um, and you know, when somebody buys this, they know it's a Memphis product, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. We, I mean, we're known for being some of the best value in our industry for sure. But at the same time, I mean, this is this is a high end product. This is designed to work on our most expensive speakers, make them sound better, but also other other into other brands as well. Um, so we want it. We want them to feel like they're getting what they paid for, which is a high quality um, mobile electronic. So that that's mm -hmm. that's our goal with all of our packaging, but especially in the higher oh, end. What stuff. what is Steve pulling out right there? Uh, he's putting oh. pulling out the digital remote control there that comes in the box as you see. Um, Are so you that, saying this, this DSP comes with the DRC in box? In the box, yep. So you can control everything you really need to on the fly: presets, LED color, sub volume, main volume, um, all from that remote that comes in the box. And if you notice that little antenna on the bottom there, that that's also has some other stuff built in. We'll, we'll we'll talk about that in a second when we get to the presentation. But uh, just note that antenna there, a little connector next to the antenna. Um, mm -hmm. So we we uh, that's part of the Memphis ways. We try to make things easy. So uh, for our, both our dealers as well as our end users, you don't have to worry about adding a bunch of accessories to make it work for your application. Like our goal is to give you everything in the box. And so, uh, value packed as per huge i would say yep. as per huge. yeah yes all right thank you stephen for the uh the product demo there um why don't we get into it we're gonna go ahead and set you up uh nick with your your presentation and uh we'll let you take it from there from there i'm looking forward to also hearing about alice's walkthrough from the software point of view all right All right. Well, here we go. Uh, obviously, we're talking about uh, DSP, so let's let's get right into it. So we'll go over the basic specs of the hardware. Um, six channels in, eight channels out. The inputs are high or low level, optical, and built-in Bluetooth streaming. So that was I mentioned that antenna. That's something that uh, we definitely provide in the box. Uh, that's some doubt. Um, and the all those inputs are selectable via the app the PC or on the DRC. So you can select all those inputs on the fly. And uh, for the high level, we accept up to 18 and a half volts max put, uh, input there on the high levels. The outputs have eight channels of RC outputs with 4.1 volts RMS. Um, and that's a real 4.1 volt. Um, so you can definitely run some high powered systems with this. Um, there are a lot of people uh, that, that quote higher uh, RMS output voltage, but that is a legit output voltage that's going to run amplifiers. The key features, obviously, I mentioned before, dead sexy cosmetics that match the VIV amplifiers. You can put this right next to the amplifier. You can show this off. It is awesome. Um, the PC software Alice is going to talk to you about, the, and then we both have iOS and Android app that are really easy to use. Um, 48 kilohertz sampling rate at 64-bit. Um, without getting too deep into that, that basically means we cover... 20 to 2k and very very high resolution output with the six not high res we're only going to 20k but the 64 bit means you're going to get a really high quality um, reproduction um, has signal sensing to turn on uh, summing and time delay all built in 31 parametrics 31 band parametrics slash graphic eq per channel and then just reminding everyone the remote and bluetooth streaming are built in in the box one, one unit, don't have to worry about adding anything else to it. So that's a few things about the, the um, features. If you look here um, on the top side, we have the outputs. So you got your eight, eight channels RC output. And then right next to the antenna, that's, uh, that's something I'll mention in the next slide, which is uh, pretty awesome and the only one that has it. And then uh, your remote plug-in, uh, if you note there, it's got a typical phone jack looking plug, but for installation purposes, the 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 wire breaks in a very thin, tiny connector, so it's a one, no problem to run the wire. You don't have to worry about running a um, 
a, a phone jack wire through. If you want to flush mount, you just drill a tiny hole to get the wire going through. And then um, on the input side on the bottom, we have our PC input, our optical input. Your six channels of low level. And then you also have the connector there, the wiring, which have your high level power ground remote. And then on the right, you have your ground reference. So out of the box, um, it ships with um, ground isolated, but you can also do a 200 ohm or direct ground right there with just a quick jumper, making life a little easier. Um, and then here is just a picture of everything else that's in the box, as you see here. Uh, the connector on the DRC is sm much smaller than a phone jack, so you can easily run that wire. You got your USB connection and then your harness. So just a few pieces in the box make really easy to set up if you've wired up any amplifier or or any sort of uh, crop crossover processor, no problem whatsoever. And this can be said with absolute certainty it's the only dsp with built-in digital light processing so uh, i wish there was a drum roll we could add there because obviously memphis is known for our high quality led setup uh but the, the our dsp unit has rgb output that gives us seven colors of rgb um, that match the seven colors that are selectable on our vav amplifiers and you can select those colors with the uh computer app the apps iOS or Android, as well as on the DRC on the fly to light up the rest of your system. And then just to mention that, we also have just added a D uh, or sorry, an RGB amplifier into our line. So you could use this DSP process to light up your entire car, including your underlight, the underglow lights, if you really wanted to uh, with, with an amplifier. So we we're big fans of the, of the LEDs here at the Memphis, because we know, as I've mentioned, other LEDs enhance sound quality and double the power um, of any amplifier, uh, just so you know. Uh, so let's go through some system designs. And uh, I'll, 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 I'll talk to Ellis a little bit about this um, as well, because he's got a pretty awesome system in his car. Um, this is a basic setup. We call a basic setup using DSP. So if you see here, you got the head unit running into the DSP, into the amplifier. That's our that's our bell amplifier. So that's a five channel. Um, so you see we're going active uh, on a mid and tweet, and then the fifth channel going out to the sub. Um, Ellis, you want to comment a bit about the the advantages of of deleting a crossover uh, in a in a situation like this. Besides the fact that it's going to simplify your overall installation, having to find somewhere to place crossovers, especially on some higher end sets, you usually have some bigger, nice crossovers. So that really allows you much cleaner, nicer install, but just the flexibility of being able to dial in the exact sound you want from the drivers. It's probably the biggest key. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. Ellis, we'll talk to you a little bit about how we, how you uh, set up our DSP and <clears throat> make a, and he'll point out how it's really easy to dial in those individual speakers. Um, next up, this is what we would consider a, a mid-level system. So this would be a, a two amplifier system. So you see that's going into a six channel amplifier and then out to a, a, uh, subwoofer amplifier, just running the subs alone. Um, and so as you can see there, that would have, um, six of your eight outputs running your front component. Um, in your mid and tweeter, and then uh, a coax for the rear. I would say this is probably a very common setup uh, for a, an eight out. Wouldn't you say, Ellis? I think so. This is probably the way that most dealers are using this system. It does allow you to optimize all the channels, but you also have plenty of channels to cover this mid-level system. Yeah, so this gives you full control of both the front two-way, the rears, and the sub. and then. This model, this we call the full control. This more models a uh, system like an Ellis's truck. Um, so you have, um, you see here, you got a three-way setup in the front. You got a pair of coax in the rear and then a sub in the back. And uh, the way this works, uh, a lot of people might look at it and go, oh, what do you do? You only have eight outputs. Well, you can see there the green lines are our outputs and there's, there's more than, than eight there. Well, the way to set this up is you have six channels six outputs running your left and right. And then for the rear, 
use a mono signal, mono full range signal to run your coax in the rear doors. And then the, the eight output goes mono to your sub. Obviously, you're running the sub mono. Um, so this allows you to get the stage and three way up front with full control. And then the rear fill that the driver isn't hearing anyway is there for the backseat passengers is mono along with the sub. Um, this is for ultimate control. What did, and what can you comment on this? Because this is basically what you have <clears throat> in your truck right now. Right. This is this is exactly the layout that I have um, in my vehicle. So it does give me the greatest control for the three way in the front. I can really dial that in and get exactly what I want from the back. Uh, using that the full range kind of mono signal for the rear doors is perfectly fine. It sounds great for somebody that's riding in the back seat. Me in the front seat with the system dialed in, I, I can barely hear those at all. So the stereo separation is not a big deal. And then the same thing, we're doing a, uh, a, a summed to channel eight, just mono base signal output and subs jam. This really allows for a lot of flexibility within an eight channel output. Yeah, so that's what, as I've been, I've been showing this off, talking to dealers on the road, you know, some people have used uh, DSPs with, you know, more output channels and they ask this exact question, but tell us this point. I mean, if you got this dialed in correctly with your front stage, I mean, most audio files will tell you, you don't even want rear stage. This is just for the rear passengers. Um, so a mono signal is not going to be a problem when you got everything dialed up front. Yep. And with that, we'll go right into a screenshot of the, the PC app. Um, that obviously runs on a PC and Ellis is going to go through the setups of both the PC and our super easy to use iOS and Android apps. Absolutely. All right. So I'm going to take this from a, from a pretty basic standpoint to jump into it. Uh, as we progress through, it'll definitely be more applicable to the guys who have done some multiple DSPs in the past, but just going to do a basic run through of how the PC software works from the very beginning. And then once we complete that, we'll move over into the uh, the phone-based apps. So when using the PC-based app, the, the first thing we're gonna assume is you already have all of the system, all the equipment installed for the system in the vehicle. So your radio's in, your speakers are in, amps are in, all of that kind of stuff. So you're gonna need to go and download the desktop app, which is available from our website, or you can get the mobile app from Google Play, iOS, Apple Store, whichever phone you're using. Once you have those downloaded, they're very easy to use and get started. Um, as far as the PC app here, you can see up in the top right corner where it says not connected. Once you have the USB cable plugged in to the PC from the DSP, all you would do is click this button. It will make the connection immediately and you're fired up. There's no load time. As soon as you're plugged in, it's active and ready to go. Uh, we, we recommend from the beginning with the radio itself, whether it's a factory aftermarket, we want everything to be centered, you know, no off-center fade, no off-center balance. We want to bring bass, treble, everything to a nice flat level, get the volume down on that radio. Uh, the second thing we're going to do before we really mess with the DSP is look, take a look at your amplifiers that are already installed. We want to have all the crossovers off or turned all the way down to an amplifier that you can't turn a crossover off. Same thing for your bass boost. We want everything nice and flat to start with because the DSP is going to process that sound better than the amplifier. So just a nice, smooth, flat, nothing crazy going on with your radio and amplifiers to get this thing started. Once you're into the DSP itself, um, I think one of the first things to probably show you is the LED light control. Once we move uh, past that, we'll definitely get into the tuning. So go into the options. You see here in the center, LED color off. There's a drop down to select between the list of seven colors that we offer in the amplifiers. So you can get all that dialed into match as well as any external speakers that you're using that might have LEDs as well. So once you have your fancy LEDs set up and glowing, you can really get in and start getting the system tuned. I think the first thing to take a look at is going to be the mixer section. So this is gonna really give you um, your options as far as you how I wanna set things up. And I didn't point out that for start with, we're showing the high level input, but we do offer high level, low level Bluetooth, as well as the optical in. For high level, a lot of the systems using the factory radio, you do have options to set that up however you want. So if you're gonna do something like a three-way system where you know that you have your inputs, we'll say one and two are high, three and four are mid and five or six are low. 
that's pretty much how this is already set up for the six channels. So we would have tweeter one and two, mid one and two, and your six and a half, eight, whatever your true mid base is for the doors. Uh, channel seven and eight, you can actually click through, turn all of these on. So now you have a full range uh, of signal going through. Same thing for the sub. You can turn them all on if you want to run full range to the sub. If you already know that all you need is the low end, you can definitely turn these off. So very simple to set that up. Same thing with summing. If, if you're trying to get a good full range signal across, we'll say all of the first four channels, you can turn on any selection of these that you want to sum and get your full range signal. If you're trying to go all left and right, you can turn it off. So now you have your, we'll call it your left channel input. You can go through on this side, turn on, have your right channel input. And that's all it is for the summing. Now that is assuming that you've already gotten into the vehicle, you've gotten everything sorted out in the vehicle. But once you have all of that done and you're to the actual DSP part, which is what we're talking about today, it is very easy to select by channel output one through eight, which input one through six you want to use. So getting getting the mixer set up, that's that's gonna be your first step once you're up and rolling. Um, another thing that you're gonna wanna do once this is done is verify that the signals coming out of your DSP are the signals that you want. So if you're trying to have a high pass uh, filter coming out, if you're trying to have a low pass coming out full range, um, you might have to use some tools. You might have to go shop and get some new new things, whether you're shopping for an RTA, some type of scope. Um, a lot of that, and even that stuff doesn't have to be crazy expensive. We found there's some, some pretty basic tools that'll work to get you guys up and running off the ground. For around a hundred bucks, you can get everything you would need for a basic setup to be able to test and you know check out some of these features. So once you verify that your signal coming out is gonna be flat, um, you're probably going to check your radio, figure out where the radio distortion sets at. I know in my vehicle, uh, the volume goes to 35, but I start to pick up distortion at, at volume 22. So I'm going to tune my system based around volume 22, kind of being the peak that I want to keep everything nice and clean. So you can go through, do that, check your inputs, check your outputs, make sure everything's functioning the way that you want to, get your amp gain set. Once you get a nice smooth curve to it, um, that's a good place to start really getting into it. So the next thing we're going to take a look at is going to be the crossover setup. And across the bottom, you can see we have the channels. As we go through and click through, it shows all the different channels. I think for setting your basic crossovers to get rolling, uh, a good thing to do is over here, we have the link, the left and right channels. We are going to copy left to right. So now I've linked channels one and two. So any changes that I make, to the first channel will affect the second one. Same thing across the board here. It's gonna automatically link the channels together. So if we start for channels one and two, let's just say we wanna run tweeters on that. You can come over here to the crossover section. We're gonna select our crossover types. We'll go with the liquids for these. And for the tweeters, we're gonna say a nice safe range. Safe range. Uh, we don't want those playing down to 20 Hertz. So you can key in 5,000 on the low end. We'll let those play up to 20K. And that is your crossover set for the tweeters for channels one and two. Channel three and four, if we're going to do a mid, we can go to the same setup there. And for our frequencies, we'll say we could top that one out at around 5,000. And we'll let that play down to, we'll say about 500 for the mid. Now channel three and four, you have a safe crossover. Now, if you want to change the slope down here at the bottom, anywhere from 6 to 48 dB slopes on the high pass and on the low pass, you can set those to whatever your favorite, the way you like to tune and set up. That's going to be the easiest way to roll through with those. And just for the sake of doing it, we'll go through here with channels 5 and 6. We'll say this is going to be our true mid base. There again, we're going to select our crossover type. We're going to let those play from 5... Uh, sorry, with those play down to about 80 and up to about 500. And those are good to go. So now we have a crossover for tweeters, a crossover that's roughly for your three to four inch upper mid range, and a crossover set for your six and a half in your door, six and a half, eight, six by nine, whatever that is. At this point, you're actually safe to turn the system on. So we have everything that's done to protect the speakers, protect all the equipment. You can now turn this on at kind of a lower, lower volume. You should be able to play music, have output, 
and you're kind of ready to go. Um, one thing that I would say I like to do at this point is verify that each channel is getting the signal that you want it to. Your left and rights are correct. Your phasing is correct. So I would normally unlink the left to right at this point so I could go through channel by channel. Uh, if I select, if I only want to hear channel one, I can run across the bottom here. I can turn off all the other channels except for channel one. So now I'm listening to just that one channel. If everything's playing, sounds good. I can bring in channel two, listen to both. Hopefully we've already checked for phasing at the time of the installation or used a phase tester to check. But if not, if something doesn't sound right, you can simply click right above, throw one speaker out of phase, and you can audibly hear if what you're doing is correcting the phase problem or if you just made it worse. If you made it worse, your phasing was probably fine to start with, and you just kind of need to go back in, take a look at some other things, or you might even be able to assess it um, a little bit farther down the line once you get into the, the more, more in-depth tuning. The next section of this that I want to talk about is over here in the bottom left-hand side. This is going to cover your main volume, which you can adjust with the slider. It does have the mute if you want to overall mute the entire system. And then for your time alignment. So in this section, you're going to set your delay. And we allow you to select from milliseconds, centimeters, or inches, depending on what your preferred method of use is. Um, in mine, I used inches. Uh, I can definitely see how the centimeters might be more popular in, uh, in some parts of the world. So I select the inches. And once you've taken your measurements and you kind of see where the speakers are located, uh, associated to each other, figure out which speaker is the farthest one away from you. That's kind of your, your starting point. And that, so that speaker also kind of sets the tone for the rest of the system. Uh, however much output you can get from that speaker, uh, that's going to kind of tell you what you can get out of the whole system. You, you can't push any, any harder than what that farthest speaker would take. So for me, I know that the, the uh, channels five and six for me would be kind of the farthest away, channel six most definitely. So I would actually set that one at zero. Like I know that's about 60 inches from where I'm at. So that would be zero. And then you would adjust every other uh, delay from there. So we'll say if the if channel five was only 40 inches away as opposed to 60 inches, you could enter your 20 or 20 inches of delay. This software calculates that for you. So you're not having to figure out the milliseconds. You're having to figure out the exact delay amount. As long as you can enter the difference in distance between the farthest speaker away and as they get closer, add those in, that's going to get your time alignment pretty well, pretty well dialed in. It should be pretty close at that point. And you can start kind of work, kind of start trying to smooth that curve out, curve out a little bit. Uh, for, for that, we definitely recommend uh, using some pink noise tracks, uh, maybe get you some direct test tones for different levels. Because even between left and right, if you have a six and a half in this door and a six and a half that's way over on the other side, a certain frequency might sound different from door to door. So different tones I would play. I would definitely play your pink noise. And with leaving everything unlinked from that point, we would get into kind of the a, a little bit more fine tuning of the crossovers if we need to. We jump into the EQ. So I'll show you a little bit on the EQing. It might be easier to show on one of the channels that's here that's in the middle. So there are a couple ways you can enter adjust values uh, for the EQ itself. You can select, we'll say right here, band 20 is going to be 1600. If you're fine with 1600, that's great. You can actually type in and change the 1600 to 15 or 14 or whatever frequency you're trying to dial in on. Same thing with the Q, which is going to be how wide the adjustment is, how tight the adjustment is. You can physically key in. Uh, this comes set at 7.5, which is a pretty spiky Q. Generally, if you get down into smoothing things out, you're going to be at a 2.0 or less, one and a half, somewhere in that ballpark. And the next segment below that is going to be your dB. So if you want to enter a negative three, you can do negative three. You can tell that it drops this down. You could change your Q to a value of one as opposed to seven. Once you do that, you can tell that it definitely smooths that out takes the kind of spikes and the peaks out of it. One thing that I like about using with this, whether you're using a mouse or if it's a touchscreen, it also works with that, is if you want to take a different frequency or we can take the same frequency. If I was trying to spike that frequency a little bit, you can actually take and drag it up and the sliders here actually adjust the cue. So in your metering testing, if you have some kind of deficiencies that you need to fix that are very limited, 
um, you know, a very, a very high or tight cue might be good to fix a certain frequency. If you're just trying to get to the sound that a certain customer wants, or if you're dialing in for SPL and you even want to get like an old fashioned, uh, just kind of like the, the smiley face cue curve, all of that is possible as well. So if you're in here, you, if you're trying to get a little bit more boost on the high end, you could definitely take this section up. You can smooth it out nicely. If you have a little bit too much on the mid-range, you can pull it down. You can smooth that out. Same thing on the low end. If you're missing a little bit, you can bring that low end up. You can smooth it. So lots of options there. And even within a tight channel, like say channel one where your tweeters, if you're getting really techy with this and want to get in some crazy adjustments, you can actually stack more channels within this section here. So right now we have 23 to 31. If we wanted to make some adjustments, we can move these over either manually or we can type in the values. So if you're EQing, we'll just say from 3K to 20K, you could stack up to 12, 15 bands of EQ in there. I don't think it's necessary, but you can definitely do that if it helps you to get the system dialed in and, and, and sounding better the way that the way that you want it to. Uh, a couple other things to show real quick on the PC app. If I've done this and I made it sound terrible, which this probably does sound terrible the way it is, you can bypass, go back to flat. And at that point, you're back to where you started. And you can also click to restore your changes and hear what you did to it. If that's horrible and you just want to start over, you can select the reset button, take everything back. And now you're where you were before you made any of the other changes. So I think that, that shows pretty well how you can adjust for the time alignment, how you can adjust your EQs. And when you get into the fine tuning and when you're back to playing all the channels together, if you hear some things that are off, um, I found even in my kind of newer time dealing with the DSP that it is, it, it's pretty easy and straightforward to get in, make some small um, like delay adjustments because you can get some phase cancellation if some of your delays and adjustments aren't, aren't just exactly right. So yeah, I think that pretty much covers everything that we want to talk about on the PC app. And well, we can take. I'll, I'll make one comment here uh, yeah. to remind you. The one good thing about you spend the time, whether it's your car, or if you're dealing with a customer's car and they like to be a tweaky guy and they don't understand the app or they don't understand what they're doing, is you can very easily save the setup on your PC, save it as Ellis's truck. Um, you know, 722 oh, yeah. for sure. And so if a customer comes and totally screws it up um, and they don't know how to fix it in time, not a large file size, you can just re upload the, the, uh, the tune you had for the previous vehicle in like five seconds. So um, yeah, very, very safe when to save all your, all your tunes. Yep. All right. So we'll move over to, the the phone app if you guys are ready we can do a quick run through on that all right so we got this up on the screen so when i first got a chance to take a look at our dsp and mess around with it it was with the phone app so i saw the phone app before i ever saw the pc software and from everything that i knew previously about using a dsp setting it up having the laptop out having the big screen with the multiple 31 bands and everything all, all in one place this was kind of like a safe space to get started. Um, you know, I, I felt good about this. I recognized what the controls were as, as far as, you know, volume base, some of the more complex settings. And I'll run through here and just show you a couple of things, very similar to what we did with the PC version. So in the top right, you will see the red power icon. If your DSP is on, your Bluetooth's on your phone, you tap that button. Just like with the computer syncing, it syncs up instantly and is ready to run, ready to go. Next to that, the green box we have, you can actually select your LED color. Like it's dragging a little bit, yeah. So once the LED color pops up, you can select between the seven colors of the LED that you would like. The main volume control is at the top. It's gonna be the wheel that's in the center. So you can roll that wheel up, you can roll it back down in order to adjust the main volume. Right below that is the speaker icon logo. That's gonna be your total mute for the entire system. So if you tap the speaker icon, it is going to mute the system totally. You can tap it again to bring it back on. And there is a slider that is located below the mute icon and that's your sub volume. So as you move that slider up and down, that is going to adjust 
your sub level directly from the phone. Below that is going to be the input selection. So whether you're going to run high level, low level, Bluetooth, optical, you would make those selections right here from the home screen. So everything you need to really get started right here on the home screen, um, I can select optical from that list. So when we go into tune, we're going to be based on a two channel optical input coming in. Below that, you do see the six presets. So like Nick was saying, if you want to do multiple presets in the one vehicle, you can do that. The presets are able to be named uh, through the software. So if you were going to do one tune that was say an SPL tune, you can have one that's dynamic with great bass, great highs. Uh, you can have a flat tune that might be better for an SQ setting, or even if it's just a, a custom preferred, if they say, man, I like to go out and play this kind of music at this spot and I want it to just to jam, but that doesn't work for all their everyday listening. You can do a, a, a specific preset just for that, for the customer. Uh, at the bottom, you have the advanced settings tab, which is going to move you into some different screens um, that are available. First one I went into was the mixer. If we were on the high level setting, it would give you all six channels in, eight channels out. Across the bottom, you can see that there are the eight separate channels. For each one, so for channel one, if I'm trying to get just a left signal, I would have the one at the top turned on. You can easily tap that and turn it off. If you want to make it the right signal, you can tap at that point, it becomes the right signal, and there is even a slider to adjust those in the input levels um, from the head unit. And across the bottom, you just select the channel that you're wanting to adjust at that point in time. The next thing I'll show you outside of the mixer is going to be in the delay settings. So once we click the delay settings box, it's going to pop up. It's going to show the image of the car. It gives a basic speaker layout. Across the bottom, you can select, just like on the PC app, from centimeters, milliseconds, or inches for how you want your, your time to be adjusted. So we will move it over to centimeters for this. And you can select. We have eight different channels we can select a delay for. You can simply tap the number that is next to one of the speakers, and it will pop up and, and show you such your output delay. Now, there's a slider. So if we're going to do seconds. You can move it up a little bit. That actually moved pretty good bit. So that would be 98 seconds of delay um, in the way the slider moved up. But for each for each channel, you can individually do that, set the delay. You just tap the speaker. If it's your subs or your rear, you can tap that down at the bottom. Same thing. It's going to pop up the box with the slider. You can slide to get just the smallest of, of increments to adjust for the amount of delay that you want for each channel. So even something as complicated as time alignment, uh, as far when it comes to all the measurements you have to take and all the setup, the actual entering of the data into the app is simple. And I think that's kind of the point that we're trying to get across with it. It doesn't have to be overwhelming. Like it can be an easy process once you've collected all the uh, appropriate data. Uh, the next screen that I'll show you is going to be the crossover screen. And it does list your eight channels, uh, one and two across the top, seven, eight at the bottom. All of these are drop down menus. So while it is a lot more compressed in the desktop app, what you can do with it is, is, is pretty mind blowing and it doesn't take a ton of thought to set up each individual thing. So I selected first, I wanna choose the type of crossover that I'm gonna use. Um, for the second thing that I would adjust, I'm gonna set the amount of the slope that I wanna use. Anything from six dB to 48 dB, I simply tap and select the one that I want. That now is how we're controlling uh, the slope for that channel. And as far as the frequency, same thing. I'm going to tap that frequency. It's going to pop up the box. I can move my slider to adjust. I want that to be 4K, slide over to 4K. Now I have set my crossover for that channel at, at, at 4K. So you can literally go through each channel. You can set for the type of crossover. If you're using the same one for each, if you're using Butterworth for all, Linkwitz for all, you can set all those. If you know you want to run 24 dB per octave, you can go through and set all those. And then you can just kind of go through and fine tune the high pass and low pass for the frequencies that you want one channel at a time. In, let's see, we'll do the output section next because there's some cool, some cool things in here. Um, it does have the link at the bottom. So if you want to link your channels one and two or channels three and four together, you can tap that link button, be able to set that up um, for each channel. It does have the same rotary volume control like the main does. So you can see with these, as I'm turning those down, we are lowering the levels of the individual channels. The speaker icons, just like on the PC app, as you go through and tap the icons, that does allow you to mute channels that you don't want to hear. 
So if I'm trying to tune just channel eight, it's gonna be just my sub channel. I can mute everything except for channel eight down at the bottom right hand corner. And now I'm able to actively work on just that channel by itself. Besides the muting, this does have the same uh, phase switch option as well. Everything's gonna be pre-done to zero. If you wanna check your phasing between channel one and two, it's as simple as going to channel two. You can tap on the zero, it's gonna flip that to 180. And then you can audibly hear whether it's doing what you want it to or not. If everything's staying in phase, if you have anything oddball going on, this is a nice way to go through and spot check yourself for you know channel configuration, for phasing. It's a very quick, easy way to do it. It's, it's a lot easier than the old school way of getting in the trunk and unhooking wires and unplugging RCAs and all that, just to be able to have complete access and control to the entire system from one phone screen. <clears throat> I think that's a, that's a really cool feature. And the last thing that we're gonna show on here is gonna be the EQ setup. Uh, very similar to in the PC version, across the bottom, you can select your channel one through eight that you would like to make your adjustments for. Once you're in there, if you'll notice in the middle of the screen, it shows four bars. That is actually a slider that you can slide across. So it's gonna start with the first, the first four that you would adjust as you slide and scroll that across, it's gonna give you the option to adjust more than just those channels. But no matter which, which series or set that you're on, if you're adjusting your low frequencies, if you're adjusting your high frequencies, it does show you the full 31 band uh, spectrum at the top. So like channel three that we have set up, we'll do channel three as far as set up here, we'll make some adjustments where we can slide the sliders up. So you can see that that made the adjustment there on the very top left-hand corner, that slider was way up. If we were gonna go farther to the other end and drop something down, we can do that. It should take just a second and register. So now you can see we have a very low spike on the high frequencies. We have a high spike on the top frequencies. Within that, you can also tap the button, just like with the, uh, with the PC app, you're gonna adjust your frequency, you're gonna adjust your cue, and you're gonna also adjust uh, the, the frequency you want to adjust. So with that, you can see we kind of spread that out. It's it's obviously this is not how you would actually tune anything. This great uh, variance of frequencies, but you can tell how you can make the spikes. You can adjust the cue. You can really dial the whole thing in uh, just to meet your your preferences. And a more realistic on this end, we'll put a spike here um, at a lower frequency for subs, and we can jump in here and smooth that curve out and kind of turn it into a nicer looking subcurve than just having the big the big spiky display up there so all of that very simple to do um same thing there again with the pc app if you wanted to bypass that eq you can tap to bypass the eq that'll take you back to a flat curve where you started from you can then tap the restore eq button once you tap that it's going to pop up a box in the center of the screen you would select okay and it's going to take you back to the changes that you made so you can hear what you had going on uh, before and after you made the changes. As I said before, if what you did sounds terrible, and I, I did a couple of bad tunes my first couple of times running through my personal vehicle, you can simply tap the reset EQ, K button, to the factory flat e that you started with. I think that's a pretty good run through of how the the app works. Like I said, it's it's not daunting at all. It's very easy to use. Uh, Nick, did I miss anything? Anything you want to add in there for the uh, phone app? Um, well, one one thing to, to show is in the output section, go to that again. Um, we missed one thing that makes life a little easier for the super simple. Um, so if you, at the very top, and um, if you tap the normal, tap the normal at the very top, um, and go to crossover mode. So if you tap normal, it goes crossover or not so if you it's difficult to see i, I think but um, if you download that you can see this automatically puts it in um six channels of output so um front left front right or one and two rear left rear right um are four and uh three and four and then five and six are are, are sub and uh, this automatically sets up six channels for your basic output. So if you even, once you do that, if you jump over to the crossover section, you'll see that the one and two are high passed at 70 Hertz, um, three and four are high passed at 80. Um, and then five and six um, have a subsonic 
and a and a and a low pass on them. So um, that that's a real easy way to get six channels going for your basic front rear sub, you know, two 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 setup. So um, absolutely, that 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 adds um, when we say simple simplify. That is your I guess uber basic setup. Uh, maybe even um, a little more basic than than the the diagram I showed earlier. So um, with that, I think uh, I think we've covered most everything. So uh, yeah, Ben uh, Ben, you want to come come back and hang out with us? I've I've been listening the whole time, of course, and we, I have some questions jotted down that I want to uh, quiz you guys on. But we're going to give you a quick break since that was a great presentation, and you probably need a second to take a sip of water. We've got another video to kind of showcase the entire line of what Memphis has to offer to remind you of what complete line Memphis is. And when we come back, let's talk, dive a little bit deeper in what we just learned. guys so you weren't kidding when you said that this was a simplified system i really enjoyed the gui the graphical interface whereby everything is very visual and well i guess it's two parts you know when it comes to the pc application my first comment is wow everything on one page that's the first thing i'm gonna say um on, on the app on the uh, mobile app uh again people know how to use apps so it's kind of intuitive on how the menus are laid out and the fact that you know there are sliders and these are very mundane things but in the dsp world that doesn't really exist right now so i really commend you guys on kind of the the the, the way that you've kind of managed to make an interface that makes sense for phone users first and foremost but uh for beginner tuners because like you said i'm happy that i was wondering if you're going to bring that up nick for a basic setup that six channel was so easy to get to doom done you can do that so Nick, I know this hasn't been a product that's been out for a heck of a long time. It's kind of really new, but there are a couple of dealers that have had the opportunity to play with and install uh, this DSP. Have you heard any success stories that you can share with us at this time, this short period that you've had to um, have this product out? Yeah, that, the as obviously as we know with the world finally opening up this year, we've been able to work some trade shows um, down here in the U.S. And uh, so there's been some dealers that uh, great dealers. I mean, they can do crazy custom installs, but they just weren't DSP guys. And so um, getting this demo in front of them, showing how easy it is getting through step by step and them looking at me and go, well, if you could do it, I got to be able to do this. Um, you know, at least I, I can I can uh, make them feel good because uh, if I can do it, they can do it. And so, I mean, I'm, I have a dealer here that, that lives 30 minutes from me that had not done that, done a couple of DSPs in the past with someone else coming in to do it for them. You know, an outside guy that, that competes and such. But uh, now they've done seven, eight DSP systems with our DSP. And now they're, you know, they look to sell one. And every time that there's, an, there's, a, there's a system, they're looking to add it on. So um, there's been a, quite a few dealers across the country that I've given that me demoing it um, is selling them on, on able to use it. And they're, they're doing way more than I am with it. Um, but just by seeing me set it up, they go, oh, wait, you went from nothing to playing in 15 minutes and then I can tweak it further. They're they're blown away, and that's been that's been the real key for uh, for us getting some non DSP dealers onto the DSP bandwagon. Very very cool. Now I know Nick doesn't proclaim himself to be a DSP <laughs> guru of any means, but uh, you know, Ellis, in speaking with you, you don't claim to be a DSP guru either. So having said that, you are have a lot of experience in car audio. Obviously, you know. What has been the learning curve and experience from your perspective, Ellis, when it comes to this product? You know, I, I think it came on pretty quick, actually. Um, I, I did most of my installation was between, we'll say, 1995 and 2009. There wasn't a whole lot of DSP around back then. What we did have back then was speaker, subs, amps, crossovers. And that's basically what this is. And once I took a step back from the main like PC software screen and looked at what I was actually doing, 
I'm dealing with RCAs going into one component, out to another component. I'm setting crossover types, which everyone did in an old three-way crossover. So if you take the, the thought out of your mind that it has to be just rocket science to tune it, take it back to the basics you know. Even the old guys had an old slider EQ they were making adjustments on back in the day. Mm -hmm. That's what you're doing. This is a more complex, a more better way to do it, but it's not hard. That's It's been good for me. So on, on that note, sticking with you, Ellis, um, you know, arguably there's going to be two kind of trains of thought or two schools here you've got the pc version and you've got the app version i know that there are features built into the mobile app that obviously are, are geared more for the end user right like the volume and the sub control and the light control and stuff like that but in your opinion which platform do you think dealers are really going to dig into and why um i i think for a shop that's used to doing dsp i think they might they, they might err on the side of the pc version because like you said it is all on one screen it's a big easy format to, to use, it's comfortable to, to work with. But for a new person that might be, you know, a little hesitant, just looking at the PC software, if you open up the app, it's like you said, everybody uses apps all day long. It's laid out in an app format. And I think it's very, I think it's very easy to understand. Plus from a time standpoint, if you're doing a basic tune for a customer using this as an integration piece, you can do everything that you need to do with that phone app in a pretty quick and timely manner without even having to get the computer out. Interesting, interesting. And providing the customer with an interface for a couple key features and function um, with the app. Correct. Above and beyond, might I mention, which I think is super cool, the included DRC in the box, which is really rare in this category. I'm just going to put that out there right now. Um, Nick, you know this You know this question is coming. So uh, Memphis all of a sudden dropping some DSP, looking like it's doing it with intent, with, with some real planning and a purpose. Uh, does this represent a new departure for Memphis within the DSP category moving forward? Um, yes. Yeah, I can definitely say that. I mean, um, the success that we've had out of the gate with this has been probably better than I anticipated. You know, I think um, it's really helped that, like, as our little scissor reel showed, I mean, it, it's we, we showed in the, in the presentation as well, anyone who knows anything about Cardi can set this up. But at the same time, with, uh, with some tools – testing tools you can you can really dial this in to be a, as dialed in as any dsp really um and so um with that we definitely have some stuff in the pipelines that won't we'll get into specifics but you know we're big in power sports you know we're big in marine um you know we're big in cars so there's definitely some stuff that's in the pipeline that we're working on and and uh and hopefully so soon we'll see more stuff in this category for us just promise me when it's ready to be talked about you'll come back on cma networks and share it with us uh, we'll de definitely will. We definitely will. All right, guys. Great job to whoever was involved in creating this product. I mean, from the design element to the programming to just delivery of the whole thing. I think you guys did a really top-notch job in putting together a package that a lot of dealers are going to are going to be favorable towards, especially those like you said, uh, Nick, that maybe haven't really dove into it yet, but wanted to. Well, now you have the reason to get into it um, in an easy way. Brought to you by Memphis. Ellis, Nick, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank, Thank you. you. Good as, no, as good as always, Ben. Take care, man. All right, there you have it. That were our, our product experts from Memphis, both Nick LaMonaco and Ellis Mathis, coming to us and showing us not only the mobile app, but also the PC app and walking us through all the great features of the new Memphis DSP. Let's go ahead and bring back our distributor from Automobility, Steve Colomb. And I want to pick his brain real quick before we let him go um, and to see really what it means to Automobility. Because let's be honest, Steve. Automobility is kind of building quite the portfolio when it comes to offering solutions to dealers within DSP. What do you have to say about that? Well, when Memphis came out with their new DSP, you know, the way the audio industry is going right now, uh, you mentioned it before, we mentioned it in the past, uh, you know, episodes that we did. DSP is the future of car audio. Uh, at some point, it's going to become uh, necessary for any audio install. So seeing more options, uh, as both of these guys very well described it, uh, easy to use, a different uh, approach to DSP. It's always good for dealers to have multiple options to use depending on the you know case-by-case -case scenario they have to deal with. Now, did you pick up what I picked up when I asked Nick about the future and he said motor, motorsports and boat? Yeah, I know what that means. I'll let, I'll let our audience put two and two together. How's that? 
It's uh, yes. Well, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. Final message for our dealers tuning in, discovering Memphis DSP for the first time. Current dealers, uh, we have them in stock. They're ready to ship along with the new uh, 6.5 series as well. Uh, for the new dealers that would be interested, uh, I think uh, you'll see the uh, the link at the bottom a bit later. Uh, our sales team, the best sales force in Canada, will be there to assist you. Um, that's it. All right. Well, Memphis Car Audio, where you want to stay in tune. By the way, brand new website when you get there, memphiscaraudio.com. New experience. So everything's up there. And any new releases will also be detailed there. And like Steve said, if you're in Canada and you want to get in on some of this Memphis action, call them up. Automob.ca. The team at Automobility is standing by. Steven, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Ben. Always a pleasure. See you, See you on the next one. Yep. Another great DSP session during our DSP sessions. And while we're on that topic, make sure you keep it locked because we're not done yet. Because DSP is all July long. We are showcasing every single brand in DSP right through till Thursday, July 28th. The biggest and baddest brands in DSP are coming on to present so that you, the dealer, can make the right choice that's best for you. And if you're interested in these videos and you're learning something, well, don't hesitate. Make sure you head over to cmanetworks.com. It's where everything lives. Hundreds of videos. If you like what you saw, check out the other Memphis videos. If you want to do see what automobility is about, check out the automobility playlist. Hundreds of videos for you to check out. That's it for this CMA workshop presented by SiriusXM. I'm your host, Ben Wu. Until next time, we connect. Stop it. Stop it. Yeah, I am. You don't need a car to listen to Sirius XM. You can listen anywhere. You know that, right? What? Kevin Hart's laugh out loud Kevin, you could use your phone. What? What? Alexa, play Kevin Hart's laugh out loud radio on Sirius XM. What? This is how I know you're getting old. I guess that was it. What?